Today we have the Flashforge Artemis, a cube-style 3D printer. I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> you thought all I knew about was crappy RGB and crappy soundbar speakers, but I can print a thing or two as well. Flashforge, the sponsor of this video, has sent us over one of their new printers, the Artemis. It's a little bit different from some of the other printers available on the market. I'm not entirely sure how it operates or what kind it is. I know it's a big cube. It's quite exciting. Instructions and things like that. And it also looks like we've got the bed. We'll be looking at that a bit later. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah. Ooh. It's quite hefty, I'll tell you that. Oh, it's so orange, I love it. I just immediately rip all the cables out. Good job, Dan. So this piece of foam just holds the head and carriage in there from moving around. Got a whole bunch of zap straps and things we gotta get out too. Oh, look, they've sent us two full spools of filament. That's really nice, actually. White PLA and a black PLA. I think we'll go with white. It's all really nice and neat, if I'm honest. Oh, this is gonna be sick. Look at this thing. Seems like the frame is really nice and sturdy. This style's different because it's a cube. Most of the other ones are like uh, upside down T style printer. We generally measure the printers in, in this direction. So you've got your Z travel here, and then your X travel, and then your Y travels this way. On traditional printers, which were like a RepRap style, something like that, the Y axis stays stationary and the bed goes back and forth. And then your X goes you know, left and right. With this one, the X and Y moves and then the bed goes up and down itself. Shouldn't really move this, you saw that light come on. <laughs> it's bad for it. This style is slightly different in that it has two independent axes here. Probably two motors on each side, it looks like. Yeah, the motor is actually on the uh, X gantry here. So we have our X gantry here and our Y gantry here. This has a full direct drive extruder. So you're gonna get a lot of performance out of the extruder rather than speed. And um, should be nice and quiet. For those of you that don't know, direct drive extruder compared to a standard Bowden style extruder, there's actually a motor up top here that pushes the plastic right next to the nozzle rather than having this tube, which is where your filament's gonna come from, be at the back. So the extruder motor is not on the back of the unit. Flash Force says that this extruder will do up to 260 degrees, which is quite nice. Or you can do your PETGs and your nylons at that sort of temperature. So it looks like a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. So you're gonna be able to do your your standard materials. If you want to do weird things like wood infill or carbon fiber type of filaments, then you'll just have to upgrade it to a hardened steel nozzle. Moving around to the back of the printer, it's all completely closed off. So we can definitely have this against a wall if you wanted to. And our little filament holder, I think, just slots in here. Yeah, that's nice and easy. And so that goes on there. Looks like it comes with a borosilicate glass bed. I mean, I would assume so. I hope so. And it has this really, really nice textured nano dot surface on the top. The advantage of using glass beds is that it's perfectly flat, so there's no sort of undulation. So your first layers adhere really well. And they've also sent along what looks like a textured metal bed. And this one feels really nice. It's a nice smooth metal texture. The nice thing about having a flexible bed is you can peel this off the printer and then just pop your parts out really easily. It comes with this big magnet on the back here and it seems to have a self-adhesive tape I think I'm gonna try it on the glass. It's not running on linear rails, it's just those ball tube things which have a very, very nice light oil on them from factory, which is good. Get that out. Ah, it even comes with extra nozzles. This is awesome. What would you like to print? Oh, I don't want to print. I even found a print file. Really? There's a little frog with a cowboy hat. That's so cute. We're <laughs> definitely doing that. Oh God. I love that. Looks like it is a touch screen. Nice and responsive, which is good. Let's get it to home. Ready? Let's see how loud it is. Holy shit, it's whisper quiet. It's incredibly affordable if you're gonna put it in a school or if you had a younger kid at home who wanted to get into learning how to use 3D printers. This seems like a, a good model for that. Uh, the build volume is quite reasonable as well, pretty standard. 200 millimeters high of build volume by, I believe it's 190 in the X direction and 195 in the Y direction. Oh yeah, that's right. It's got a light in the top of it. I love that. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got languages, it's got a buzzer. I definitely want the buzzer on it. Sweet. 
What does the level do? What's gonna happen? Okay, let's see if it's gonna crash. Oh, it did not. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, click the arrow to adjust the platform so that it just touches the nozzle. So now we're setting our Z-axis offset. Raise this platform and sit by the side of it till we get next to it. This is way easier than having to adjust yourself manually. Because we only have two adjustment knobs on the front and none at the back, it went to the center here and then we got it to touch. And so now what I think it wants me to do is turn the knob. Yeah, there you go. Unscrew the corresponding nut under platform until touching the nozzle. So we are touching it right now. So I'm just gonna bring this corner down by unscrewing the nozzle. No, tightening the nozzle. Tightening the nozzle brings the platform away from the nozzle. And I'm just looking at the light through it and I'm just gonna undo it, bringing the platform up and just till I can't see the nozzle anymore. Here we go, next. God, this is so much easier than what I have to do at home. <laughs> I'm jealous. There's the other side is done. So that was incredibly easy to level this bed. Let's open up some filament. This is my favorite part of opening filament is the fun noise. Are you ready for the sh Didn't do it. <laughs> Never let go of the end ever, ever, because it'll get all tangled up and you'll ruin your life. And it looks like the path is gonna come up this side. So I'm gonna put my filament here and just stuff it in there. In you go. Nice, like, siliconized type tube thing. That's not bad at all. There's a lot of space in between there. I would prefer a tighter Bowden tube. Everybody likes a tight Bowden tube. Blue? I loaded white filament. <laughs> I guess they test them at the factory with blue or something like that. Test file. We have a tool changin and a file connect. Filter connect. It's got a nice little display here of what you're about to print, including the time, how much filament it's gonna use, the layer height, and the speed that it's gonna print at. There, there, there we go. Oh, he's so cute. This is gonna be uh, quite a challenging print for this printer. I don't think I can print this. I'm just gonna use their default settings. I think that's pretty important to start with. Default extruder width, 0.4. PLA, a little cold, maybe we'll, we'll try that. Uh, layer height is 0.18 as a default, which is pretty detailed. Uh, normally I print at like 0.3 because I want my prints now, not in five hours. So we'll see how the default settings look and see how fast it prints and see if it even sticks to the bed. So we're gonna start with homing. Oh, nice. Look, it's got a little picture of the froggy. Make sure our belt plate's clean. Don't use your hand. You'll get oils on it. Use a cloth or something. Nice slow first layer. It's quiet apart from the fans, but Ooh, look at that. It's doing the outline of the, the froggy legs. I don't know if it's still there. Sorry, I hope you guys aren't trying to do anything. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we're filming a short circuit. Wow. What? No, you're not. Since when do we 3D print hey, things on a short Dan? circuit? Dan, what are you doing? I'm doing a short circuit. Are you sure this table is really stable enough it for 3D cool. printing? <laughs> yeah, no, this okay, is fine. Oh, cool. Yeah. Now that we're through the first layer, speeds have improved quite a lot. This is just our, our basic speeds. The travel moves are looking pretty nice and fast. It's whisper quiet, apart from the layer fan and the power supply fan. Uh, infill looks good. All the lines look good. I'm not noticing too much over extrusion or under extrusion on the first layer. A little bit of wispy on one of the feet during one of the travel moves, but it was quite slow. So I would certainly suggest playing around with your slicer settings. First, one of the features that I want to try is the um, Linus protection feature where he comes and trips over my cord. Like, oh no. And now the power's come back on. So, let's see what happens. Will it recover? The boy frog? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Resume the uncompleted print job. Yes, please. Well, would you look at that? Not many printers have uh, resume from failure state. Is it just continuing? Yeah, it finished that bit of infill there. This is great. And we're back after only an hour and a half and maybe four days later, my beard's a little longer and I've got a different shirt on. Our little frog friend is done. Look at that. One thing that I wanted to test now is the release of this interesting little glass surface. So just by grabbing him from his hat, let's see how easy he pops off if we have to use a spatula or anything. Look at that, nice and released. Not a huge level of surface defects in the base. No real elephant's feet around the edge, which is when you get a little bit of a lip around the side. Maybe some of it, um, but I only bed leveled it in like five seconds. So this is looking pretty good. 
Yeah, a little partner there. So we'll put him aside and move on to some of the other things. I'm a little bit concerned that the hot end assembly and most of this is proprietary, unupgradable, unrepairable for yourself. And if you want to be learning about 3D printers, you're going to be wanting to do your own maintenance and repairing it yourself. So one of the things that's interesting about 3D printing is you can change a lot just by changing the nozzle. And if you have to buy all of them from FlashForge, then you're limiting yourself to some fun exotics that you might not get access to if FlashForge doesn't provide you with that type of nozzle. Because one thing that I'd like to have a look at is how they're doing their motor drivers. If it's an all-in-one system which you can't replace if one of them burns out, you've got to buy a whole new main board, or if they're um, standard drop-in styles that you could experiment with, try different ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a dumbass. Our motherboard is this nice little green board here. This is our power supply. We've got our Z-axis motor here, and this is the assembly for the nice little touch screen that plays songs at the front. Looks like our motor drivers are all soldered onto the motherboard, so you won't get any chance to upgrade that. They've all got some pretty nice heat sinks on there, which is good. We've got a little 40 millimeter fan, which is nice and easily accessible here. Looks like we've got some extra ports here for a couple more things, maybe sensors. There's a secondary fan port here, so you could put another one somewhere else if you were into that. Okay, we're back on the top side now. I want to have a look at how this hot end assembly is put together. Let's ruin this printer. Okay, I was wrong. They're not linear bearings. They're actually bronze bushings, which is very interesting. I don't think I've seen that in a printer before. They should just pop out quite easily then. Uh, it looks like they're held in by just pressure. Snap. Yeah, there we go. Those actually roll really smoothly. They're silent, there's no noise from them, and uh, the belt tensioning system here is just friction fit, so that all comes out really nicely, and our hot end assembly's out. So easy. There we go. I'll just pull that out of the way, and now we have access to our hot end assembly. And just like that, couple cables, couple screws, we have... <laughs> Sorry, I'm learning from Linus. Uh, just like that, we've got our hot end assembly. It's really nice all-in-one, almost plug-and-play style thing. Got our layer fan here, which is pointed sort of directly at the silicon sock, which is a odd choice. I'd like to see that a little bit lower, maybe. And there's our LED. And we've got a little plug-in driver board here, which is basically just uh, making everything plug in easily so that this main cable can send it all back to the brains. Looks like our nozzle is going to go all the way through that and butt up against the top of the heat brake there. It's a really nice little assembly, I think. Um, it's not very heavy. It's a pound. After ripping apart the hot end assembly, which actually wasn't that difficult, um, we found a couple interesting little notes of things. Uh, nozzles are a weird size, but seem very easy to install and remove. The X carriage is not supported on linear bearings, but bronze bushings, which is a very interesting choice. It seems to run nice and smooth and true, and they're really easy to take in and out. There is a uh, separate control board right on top, which is basically just a bunch of plugs that transfer everything over to this data cable for power and sensors and the little light underneath. It's, it's quite elegant, honestly. I do like the fact that it sings. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can get in there nice and easy. It seems well built. All the plastic injection parts on the hot end assembly and underneath seem to have heat set inserts, which is really nice. So you can be taking this apart constantly without having to worry about the plastic tearing out. I think if you're not really into doing much of the tinkering or if you really don't want to get into the mechanicals of how a 3D printer works and be changing out parts and worrying about that. If you just want something that prints reliably and quickly-ish if you want to be playing with settings, I think this printer is uh, a really, really good offering in the space. It's quite competitive at the 600-ish US dollar price range and this one I think fits into that very nicely. For once, uh, uh, I'm actually quite impressed with a printer of this caliber. It's, uh, it's real sturdy and I really like it. Thanks to FlashForward for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, throw a like downstairs and uh, give me a yeehaw in the comments for our little froggy friend.